Keeping it real with your host, Justin Villa Real. And today we're going to be talking about the NFL draft that's coming up in April. And here is my mock draft. This is how I see things going for this year's draft. We're going to get things started going from pick one to pick 32 in this year's draft. Let's get things started with the first overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Everybody knows. It's going to be Clemson quarterback Trevor Lawrence moving on to pick number two. This is when the draft really does start because we already know who's going number one. But I got the quarterback from BYU, Zach Wilson, going number two to the New York Jets. I think that the Jets will draft Zach Wilson because he's the second best quarterback prospect in the draft, obviously behind Trevor Lawrence. And I think the Jets are going to rebuild their franchise around Zach Wilson. Pick number three, the Miami Dolphins. I think they're going to select Alabama wide receiver Devontae Smith, the Heisman Award winner. And the reason why I think Devontae Smith goes to Miami is because of the fact that he played with Tua Tonga Vailoa and the Dolphins are looking to get the most out of Tua. And I think that drafting his buddy, Devontae Smith, is really going to help Tua Tonga Vailoa out. Also, Devontae Smith is a playmaker. He can make plays. And I think that that's what the Dolphins need. Is they just need a big playmaker on the offensive side of the football. They get that with Devontae Smith. Moving on to the fourth overall pick, I got the Atlanta Falcons selecting Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields. He's from Atlanta. This makes too much sense. He can learn under Matt Ryan for a year. He's going to have Calvin Ridley there. Todd Gurley is going to be there. Who knows who they would draft in the 20, 2022 draft. I think that Atlanta is the perfect spot for Justin Fields to succeed and maybe live up to the hype that is around him from mainly Ohio State fans that hype him up as the best quarterback in the draft. I don't think he's the best quarterback in this year's draft. I think that He's the third best quarterback, but I think that he can be very, very good, especially if he goes to a place like Atlanta and they build around him. And I think that he's going to have a lot of success for his hometown team, the Falcons. I think that's a really good pick for the Falcons to make. Going to number five, the Bengals almost lost this guy because they won some games, but the draft fell the way that they probably hope it does. And they draft Oregon offensive tackle Penny Sewell to protect Joel Burrow, and that is, I think, the obvious pick for the Bengals. Everybody has Penny Sewell going to Cincinnati at five if Miami doesn't pick him, which I don't think Miami's going to take him. So Penny Sewell going to Cincinnati. Moving on to pick number six, I have the Philadelphia Eagles drafting tight end from Florida, Kyle Pitts. reason why Zach Ertz is leaving and because Zach Ertz is leaving, the Eagles going to look to replace him. And Kyle Pitts, I think, is a good replacement for Zach Ertz. So that's why I have Philadelphia going with Kyle Pitts. Pick number seven, I have the Detroit Lions taking linebacker from Penn State, Michael Parsons. And there was some controversy surrounding him. But I think the Lions are a team that they don't really care about the controversy too much. I think they're still going to take... Michael Parsons, then they're going to try to build that defense around Michael Parsons. That's why I have them going with Michael Parsons at number seven. At pick number eight, I have the Carolina Panthers going Caleb Fairley, cornerback from Virginia Tech. And the, the Panthers are building a young defense. They got Jeremy Chin. They got Derrick Brown. Now, I think they add another defensive player. I think they add a good, solid cornerback to go in and help continue to build that great defense in Carolina. Moving on to pick number nine, I have the Denver Broncos taking Michigan defensive lineman Quitty Payne. I think that Quitty Payne is going to be a good addition to the Broncos defense. They already have a young offense that they've built around Jerry Judy. And I think that now they're going to continue to add to that defense in Denver and can the Broncos be a good team next year. I think that 
adding to that defense is going to give them the best chance to do so because they already have the pieces on offense and maybe next year is going to be the year that Drew Locke finally figures things out. Moving on to the 10th pick, I have the Dallas Cowboys taking cornerback from Alabama, Patrick Sertain. I think that this just makes a lot of sense for the Cowboys. I've heard a lot of people say that he's going to the Cowboys. I think this is a match made in heaven for the Cowboys and Patrick Sertain. I think this is a good fit for them. And that is why I have Patrick Sertain going to Dallas at number 10. At number 11, I have the New York Giants selecting Rashawn Slater offensive lineman from Northwestern and they have Daniel Jones. They have Saquon Barkley. They need to build that offense line. I think that Rashawn Slater is the guy to help do it. And I think that that is why the, the Giants go Rashawn Slater at number 11. At pick number 12, we have a trade. We have a trade at pick number 12. I think that San Francisco, they're going to trade down and acquire more picks in later rounds of this year's draft. They're going to trade back with the Washington football team to pick number 19 so they get the 19th pick plus some later round picks as well maybe like a third or a fourth and then like a six round pick so they get like maybe two three picks in total including the 19th pick and washington moves up to take trey lance quarterback from north dakota state they did just sign taylor heineke to a contract extension but this is the way I look at things. Taylor Heineke's only had one good game. Alex Smith is still old, and I think that the Washington football team is going to use all that is going to try to utilize all their options at the quarterback position. And I think that getting Trey Lance is going to be another way that they could really maximize getting the best quarterback because now they'd have three quarterbacks to choose from for who to start. And I think that it's just a move that I feel like Washington's going to make. Someone's got to draft Trey Lance, and I just feel like it will be Washington. And then moving on to pick number 13, I have the Los Angeles Chargers drafting Christian Darasaw from Virginia Tech. They have Justin Herbert as their quarterback. They want to protect him, so they're going to go out and get him a great offensive lineman in Christian Darasaw. I think it makes a lot of sense. You want to protect your young quarterback, and that's what the Chargers would be doing here. Pick 14. I have Jamar Chase, wide receiver from LSU, going to join his former college teammate, Justin Jefferson, in Minnesota as the Vikings draft Jamar Chase, 14th overall. I think this makes a lot of sense because the Vikings, I think that this is how you build your offense. I know they have Adam Thielen there. Maybe they'd have three great wide receivers. Maybe they trade Adam Thielen and get another first-round pick. They could do a lot. But I feel like pairing up Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson once again, plus you have Dalvin Cook as your running back. I think it makes too much sense for Minnesota as they are going to be looking to help Kirk Cousins become a good quarterback. Or maybe, maybe they trade Kirk Cousins to San Francisco for Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that could be a very interesting trade if it happens. And if it does, then I think if you surround Jimmy G with Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase and Dalvin Cook, I think good things can happen for the Minnesota Vikings. They are a good team. They're just a quarterback away. I think that adding a wide receiver really does help them because the better your wide receivers are, the better your quarterback can be. And I think that that is why Minnesota goes with yet another young wide receiver as they continue to build that young offense that they have in Minnesota. Number 15, pick number 15, another trade is the Chicago Bears trade up with the New England Patriots to pick 15, and they're drafting offensive tackle from Alabama, Alex Leatherwood. Now, I think that the Bears most likely trade like a third round pick or a second round pick to New York to get Sam Darnold. So now they have Sam Darnold, or maybe they stick with Nick Foles. Whatever the case is, whether it's Foles, whether it's Darnold, you want to build an offensive line around him. And Ryan Pace, Bears general manager, has been known to trade up in the past. I think that this is an, a situation his job is on the line. He needs to fix the quarterback position. Whether you go Darnold, whether you stick with Foles, 
you're not going to have success at the quarterback position without building that offensive line. They did have some good offensive line play near the end of the year, but I think that they do need another offensive lineman to really help that offensive line out. And I think Alex Leatherwood is the guy, and I think that makes the most sense for the Bears. I think that is why they trade up aggressive in a year where the front office, their job is on the line. Makes perfect sense, in my opinion, to be aggressive, trade up, and get an offensive tackle. Maybe it's not the right thing to do. I think that you could make the debate whether it's the right or wrong thing to do. But I'm saying I think that with the urgency to win in Chicago, that's why Pace is going to be aggressive and move up. Moving on to pick number 16, Arizona Cardinals draft running back from Alabama, Najim Harris. Reason why Kyler Murray is running quarterback. If you're going to stick with Kyler Murray as your quarterback, I don't think they should do it. But Cardinals fans are very ignorant and they think that Kyler Murray is the guy. He's not the guy. But I think that they should build something like what Baltimore has where you have a running game. They don't really have a good running back in Arizona. And I think that if you add Najim Harris, arguably the best running back in this year's draft class, it could really help you out. Plus you have DeAndre Hopkins. I think adding an elite running back is what the Arizona Cardinals offense needs to be successful in a very, very tough division. Now, drafting Najim Harris does not make them a contender in the NFC West. They still will finish fourth as long as they have Kyler Murray as their quarterback in the NFC West. They're not finishing above third in that division, probably fourth. But I think that their best option if they want to keep Kyler Murray is drafting Najim Harris. Moving on to pick number 17, the Las Vegas Raiders. I have them drafting Alabama wide receiver Jalen Waddle. He's a speedy wide receiver, and he's a good punt returner, good kick returner. I think that the Raiders looking for another offensive playmaker. They got Josh Jacobs. They got Henry Ruggs. I think that they're going to get Jalen Waddle as well, build around Derek Carr over there in Vegas. Moving on to pick number 18. I have the Dolphins drafting Jeremiah Asubu, linebacker from Notre Dame. I think that's the guy that the Dolphins go with. They went with an offensive player with their first pick. I think they go defense with their second pick. Moving on to pick number 19, the San Francisco 49ers. Get South Carolina cornerback J.C. Horn. Reason why I think that one of their cornerbacks, maybe multiple other cornerbacks, leave. I think Richard Sherman leaves. Maybe K1 Williams stays. Maybe he goes. But they will have a need at the cornerback position. And I think that J.C. Horn is someone that they can draft to uh, kind of replace whoever they lose at the cornerback spot. I think it's most likely going to be Richard Sherman. And then maybe you can move Jason Verrett to cor cornerback number one, K1 Williams, cornerback number two, and then J.C. Horn, cornerback number three. You got to resign K1 Williams and Jason Verrett, though. But I think that that's the best bet for the 49ers moving forward. Pick number 20, the New England Patriots draft quarterback from Alabama, Mac Jones. He just feels like a Patriots quarterback. He just seems like and plays like a Patriots quarterback. And I think that that's the guy that the Patriots will draft is Mac Jones. Moving on to pick number 21, the Indianapolis Colts draft edge rusher from Texas, Joseph Asai. I think that the Colts, they want to continue to build that defense. And I think that that's what they would do with this pick. Moving on to pick number 22, the Tennessee Titans draft Miami edge rusher, Gregory Rousseau. I think that the Titans want to build that defense as well. And I think that that's what they would do with this pick as well. Moving on to pick number 23, the New York Jets draft Samuel Kasami, offensive tackle from Texas. Kind of like the Chargers. You have your young quarterback. Now you want to protect him. Go out and get an offensive tackle to play alongside Makai backed in in New York, and I think that that would be a good pick for the Jets. Really protect their their quarterback, Zach Wilson, for years to come. Moving on to pick number 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I think, draft 
Minnesota wide receiver Rashad Bateman. Reason why Juju Smith Schuster is leaving, and I think that Rashad Bateman could be a good replacement for Juju. Moving on to pick number 25, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars drafting running back from Clemson, Travis Etienne. He's someone that Trevor Lawrence is, is familiar with, someone that Trevor Lawrence knows. I think that it's a pick that's going to help make your young quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, comfortable. And that's why I have the Jaguars going with Etienne with their second first round pick. Moving on, pick number 26, the Cleveland Browns drafting linebacker from Tulsa, Zavin. Collins, they need to add a little bit to the defense, and I think that adding Zayvon Collins is how you do it if you are the Cleveland Browns. Moving on to pick number 27, I have Kadarius Toney, wide receiver from Florida, going to the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens need a wide receiver. They have the running game. Now they need the wide receiver, and I think that Toney could be the guy. Moving on to pick number 28, I have Linebacker from Missouri, Nick Fulton, going to the New Orleans Saints. I think they need to build that defense a little bit. Maybe that could be their new identity now that Drew Brees is gone. And I think that how you make your defense your identity is with Nick Fulton. It starts off with that. That's the pick that I think that the Saints go with. Moving on to pick number 29. I have the Green Bay Packers drafting edge rusher from Miami, Jalen Phillips, they need to be able to stop the run in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And how you do that is you draft defensive players. You draft an edge rusher to try to help stop the run because that is the kryptonite of the Packers defense is teams running the ball all over them. And when you have a division that has Dalvin Cook and David Montgomery in it, you need, you need to be able to stop the run, especially because Aaron Rodgers is on his way out and you're not going to have success in the division when you can't stop the run and David Montgomery and Dalvin Cook are in your division. Green Bay needs run stoppers. Jalen Phillips is a run stopper. That's why I think it's the smart pick for the Packers to do. Moving on to pick 30, I have the Buffalo Bills drafting wide receiver from LSU, Terrence Marshall. And I think that this pick Makes sense for the Bills because I think they're going best available. I think Terrence Marshall is the best available wide receiver. Um, is just the best available player. I think moving on to pick number 31. I have the Kansas City Chiefs drafting Elijah Vera Tucker, offensive guard from USC. They need to protect Patrick Mahomes. And I think that this is a good pickup for the Chiefs if they want to help protect. Patrick Mahomes in the final pick, the defending Super Bowl champions, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going to be drafting defensive tackle from Alabama, Christian Barrymore. I think this pick makes a lot of sense because they're going best available. Christian Barrymore is the best available defensive player. And I think that he can really help add to that young Buccaneers defense led by guys like Antoine Winfield Jr., led by Devin White. And I think that adding Barrymore is just going to make that defense that much better that's all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more sports content and I will see you all in the next video.